story of Elijah and the widow. I hope you watched the film by now. If you have, uh, just to point out that that film was made several years ago when I was in, when I was in Taiwan. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Elijah is the first of many famous prophets. Uh, this story here, of course, is the first of, of the stories that we have about Elijah and, and Elisha. But in the Bible, he is, uh, when he breaks out in such, a, in such a dramatic way in the Bible, he's really the first of these uh, a series of famous prophets. To deal with the story, there are several things that I, want to, I, I would like to point out. We normally think about the, the northern ten tribes and the southern two tribes. When we think of Judah, we think of Judah and Benjamin. In reality, there's a third main tribe down there, and that is the tribe of Levi. Uh, they were also in the north, but there was no use for them there. They were pushed out. They, 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 they weren't needed. Jeroboam got his priests from just the common people, and, and, and he had no respect for, for the tribe of Levi. So most of them left and went to the south, where, where they could serve God more faithfully. And so the, uh, uh, also when you look at this story, starting here, and well, it'd be before as well, but uh, there's the next few stories talk about the uh, Baal. Now, when you have idols, idols were, uh, were supposed to be gods of certain things. You have the gods of the, of the mountains, the, go the gods of the, of the sea, the gods of the valleys. And, and, well, Baal was the god of rain and harvest. This is a very dry area, and rain was so important. So you can see why the people in this area, if they're superstitious enough, could say, well, maybe this little idol, uh, or, or this big idol, in, in most cases, could, if I worship this idol, could help my harvest and help rain. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind as you, as you go through these stories. This particular story, I find it fascinating that... Um, uh, the needs for food for this great prophet were met by some unusual ways. First of all is the raven. Well, the raven, according to the law of Moses, was an unclean bird. And yet God uses this unclean bird, this raven, to provide food for the prophet. When he went to Zarephath, he, uh, uh, he, his food was provided by a Gentile woman, not a Israeli woman or a Jewish woman, but a, a Gentile woman. But on top of that, she was not just any Gentile. She was a Gentile of the same nationality as Jezebel. Here, Ahab is looking all over for this prophet, and he's in the country where his wife came from. <laughs> I find that so interesting, just, uh, just the twist of what, of what God does there. Well, Elijah in history is, is uh, dramatic and uh, full of emotion and passion, but he's probably one of the most famous of the prophets. He, he is honored not only by, by Judaism, and he's honored by Christianity, but also by Islam. This great prophet is honored by, by people around the world. Think about the woman. The woman, uh, what faith. Oh, here she's on her last bit of food, going to make it up for herself and her son, and, and yet God says to the prophet, uh, feed, you know, feed the prophet first, then I will take care of you. 
What faith that she actually does that. It's just amazing. But also I notice in this story that uh, when we think about this woman and her son, we think about the miracle of the flour and the oil. Yet to her, that wasn't the big miracle. When her son is raised from the dead, she says, now I know that you are a man of God. Why didn't she know this with the miracle of the flour and the oil? I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe she somehow rationalized out that this was possible in some other way. But when her son was raised from the dead, she knew that was from God. Well, I trust you'll enjoy these stories as I go th as we go through more Elijah and Elisha stories. We'll see you next week.